grew up out here and I really liked going outside and so I co-opted for the MNR and then I worked summers as a student for the MNR and I decided to go into uh, college at Sir Sanford Fleming to take uh, forestry fish and wildlife um, courses and I just got a job right away at the MNR and I really like it. I like being out here and protecting our values. Biology, your science classes. Math will come in handy. Um, right now we're doing a lake trout um, tracking on uh, one of our large lakes called Eagle Lake and uh, we're putting transmitters in the lake trout and checking to see what parts of the lake that they're using so we go up and upload receivers that we have throughout the lake and uh, just tracking their movements. So with the data gained from this program what could you could you implement in Eagle Lake? So the purpose of, of that was it's such a large lake that we didn't know what parts of the lake the trout were using and it was actually a development proposal on the lake and on a section of the lake that wasn't originally planned to be managed for lake trout. The lake trout are a more sensitive population of fish and um, so this information that we gathered now has showed us to use the whole lake and that we need to use treat the whole lake as lake trout habitat. I'm a forester for Domtar okay. here in Dryden. It's the, the, the facility, the mill facility here in Dryden. I'm a planning slash silviculture forester here. Initially I took the technology course at Lakehead U and that was a two-year course and I came out with my diploma in integrated forest resource management and I enjoyed the school and I enjoyed the uh, type of information I was learning and I carried on into the degree program so I have a diploma and mm -hmm. that's a, at a college level and a degree in forestry at the university level. I think people have to know that today the environment is important mm -hmm. and uh, we need people to be managers of the of the environment, of the forest, of the of our water. Um, it's a global it's a global obligation for all of us to be aware of what's happening on the on the land and in forestry particularly it's it's a public force, so hmm. the more we know about what's happening, the more we can get involved. And as a, a public member, they can definitely get involved with the um, all types of management plans that happen in the environment. But I think for people that are interested in forestry or in integrated management, they have to have a keen interest in the outdoors, um, but they have to really understand that it's not just the outdoors, it's bringing all different types of people together to um, listen to what is important to them and then to use our resources as, uh, as what's guided in the provincial guidelines and as how professionals um, know how to use their, their background. There's science, science part of forestry, there's a lot of computer part of forestry, but nowadays there's a lot of social part of forestry because um, forestry is not just cutting down trees, it's uh, bringing the whole environment and protecting the values there. And What's a value to some people isn't a value to another person. What's a value to animal habitat uh, might be a, a, a bigger value to uh, a recreationist, that type of thing. So stakeholders uh, is an actual key. So you do need good people skills and you do need good writing skills and speaking skills because that is, for myself as a planning forester, that was at one time about 60 to 70 percent of my job. Okay. Just talking to people and educating and uh, telling them what we're going to be doing and and if we can do it, maybe it's just something that we can't, uh, we can't even do because of the values that are out in the environment. It's a really good job. It's a very interesting summer job for uh, summer students. Uh, you could travel across the world doing it. I have someone doing forestry in China. I had someone that I went to school with that's doing forest management or fire management in Australia. And um, there is some people that we went to school with that are in Finland doing forestry. So it's a global opportunity, uh, but it's right here in Canada and it's going strong. I work for the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources as a forest health technical specialist. What we do is we survey um, areas of land across Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, large amounts of land, looking for major insects, um, diseases, and any abiotics, so non-living disturbances like wind or tornadoes, floods, okay. flood damage, stuff like that. Um, a typical day would involve traveling about throughout your work area, looking for any insect disease or abiotic disturbance. Um, 
determining the location, and then trying to figure out approximate areas, how bad the pest problem is, recording it, and then later in the season, you would actually go and do an aerial inventory to figure out the exact magnitude of that uh, problem. A lot of projects that we do, we monitor a lot of insects, um, key in insects that we monitor in this area, are spruce budworm and jack pine budworm. And then we also pay attention to other things like forest tent caterpillar, drought problems, major wind events, and storm damage. I have a bachelor's degree in forestry from UNB, and that's a, a good solid background, a, a solid background in uh, a technical background in forestry would work well. Um, specialized in insects or disease is a bonus. Um, this, because it is a specialized group, there is a knowledge base that um, you'd like to have to come into it so that you, you know that when you start work that you have those level of competencies with, with insects. And not necessarily that you know them all, you just know how to figure it out. So you know how to use keys, you know how to use reference manuals, and uh, you know how to, to survey. The best part of my job is, is the field work. It's getting out there. I spend approximately 90% of my field season traveling around the woods looking for things. And the other 10% is the important stuff, which is the paperwork. Okay. So people keep track of the paperwork, and uh, I keep track of the insects. So I, I love what I, I love being out there and being hands-on and in the field, um, being the person to find stuff and to pass the information on. If you're interested in forest health, it's always good to, to take um, courses in entomology, pathology, um, try working with uh, people in, in your area, in, in, that neck, in that field of study. There's lots of people out there who do this type of work. Um, the government does one aspect, but there are private industry as well who cover off a lot of stuff. And uh, if you're interested in doing it, you can find all kinds of neat information in, in, your, in your town. Um, it could be anything from what your municipality does for insect uh, damage and disturbances to what the province does. And if you're interested, you know, by all means, contact uh, uh, the MNR, look into student positions to get experience, uh, anything like that. And then if you're looking at uh, post-secondary education, then uh, a techni technical program where you can focus on insect or disease or both. Um, forestry program doesn't hurt. Um, and yeah, any natural sciences really works. Well, a large part of my job involves actually going out in the field and I uh, supervise uh, planting, site prep. Mm -hmm. We do tending on our forest and I also work with the harvesting as well. I went to like Head University and yeah. did the forestry program. It's, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. You have a very diverse job. Like some days you spend in the office, but like I said for myself, especially when it gets warmer yeah. in the summer, I'm outdoors quite a bit which I find really nice having that variety. Yeah. So I never really do the same things. I also do uh, quite a bit of GIS work. So I do all the mapping mm -hmm. for the company I work for and, and that, you know, that enables me to stay in the office. Most of forestry, uh, all our inventory, like mm -hmm. inventory is um, what stands yeah. exist in the forest and, and what we, we're working with. Everything's all done on GIS. Okay, great. So you have to really under how yeah. to use that program. Hi, I'm Ray Kilke. I'm uh, with Domtar. I'm an uh, you know, operations forester. I worked for Domtar and other predecessor companies for probably 35 years okay. and did a wide range of everything from road location, fire protection, and civil culture, survey and roads. Um, a little bit of everything, I guess you say, and I'm one of those people been around forever. So we started with the coloring pencils and <laughs> we moved to the new era of GPS and GIS. And uh, so that's been quite quite interesting. And uh, I guess the nice thing about it, we, we work with students every summer and on um, the tree plants and so on. And it's just the fact that everybody, if they're in the field, they're excited about what they're yeah. doing. Um, and I guess a lot of the highlights I found is, is again, practicing, I, I call it my garden, like when I did silviculture, in the sense that, you know, you're renewing the forest and you're very happy when you do free to grow or whatever to see how the forest is growing, how it's coming back, that you're trying to do what's right. And I think that's was the same with everybody else, that, that you work with good people was a lot of it and uh, what was, uh, you know, everybody's trying to do what's right. I'm a technician and graduated many years ago out of Lakehead University and uh, basically uh, managed, I'm a dried knight to begin with, 
and managed to get on actually a couple years before I uh, graduated and out of high school and I uh, did timber cruising out of high school and that was quite experience. I uh, didn't really know what I was doing but managed to survive and then I went away to, to forestry and in the end I managed to work for the ministry one summer and ended up there was a full-time position I got over the company. I think I always tell students generally whatever you do in life um, you know, like, like, and one thing we used to say, same thing, if you go out and you work, how do I say, the jobs have changed so much, there's so many uh, roles are more office based than planning based. If it is a job that works out in the outdoors with the bugs and the elements, um, it's good to practice it, doesn't matter what job it is, because you'll know right away whether you can like that or okay. don't like that. And, and uh, there's a lot of people who realize, no, this isn't for me. So that's good. Figure so, out in life what you want to do. Then then have the passion to put your best foot forward all the time and, and uh, enjoy it. I'm a forest intern, actually, so I don't really have a specific job. It's training with people, uh, experienced MN uh, people in the MNR. So if there's a biologist and she's going out to check a dam or anything to do with biology and wildlife, I'll go and uh, try to learn some of what she does. Any people that do forestry related stuff like uh, compliance, which is basically, forest, the, the companies are bound by their forest management plans and if they cut out an area and there's an eagle's nest or any type of area of concern, they're supposed to abide by those rules. So as a compliance person, I go check it out and make sure they're saying or they're doing what they said they were going to do in their plan but basically as an intern I'm always learning and doing what I can to learn more and my goal actually is to get my RPF which is registered professional forestry status so that I can sign off forest management plans and such. I went to school for forestry actually. Yeah. I started off in Con College in Thunder Bay. I did a forestry technician, a two-year forestry tech diploma and uh, I transferred to Lakehead to do their a degree in forestry. My name is Derek Johnson. I'm a forester for the Ministry of Natural Resources. And uh, I went to school at University of New Brunswick and did uh, about a year and a half of timber cruising field work in BC. I went back to school and did GIS as a secondary diploma and ended up in Ontario working for the Ministry of Natural Resources as a planning analyst. The main duties of the forester in the, in the ministry is to do forest management planning. So we use a series of tools to project forest out long term into the future. It allows the companies to harvest and manage for other values such as wildlife, and tourism values and other features like that. And then we use it all with uh, GIS planning and uh, we make sure uh, on the implementation of these plans that uh, forest companies abide by the rules they set forth and that the operations are clean and regenerated properly. So, uh, as a resource planning analyst, there's a major focus on the planning side. So there's a lot more duties around GIS and forest modeling in those positions. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the area forester position, uh, you do more of the day-to-day -day field work with the companies, the, uh, a lot more uh, dealing with the resource users coming into the office and uh, protecting their values and then actually getting out in the field and seeing okay how do we improve our operation. I always like to get out in the field. Uh, part of the, the reason I got into forestry was to be in the field. As an analyst I didn't get out to the field as much as I, I do as a forester and uh, the people that we work with are really quite good too. Uh, I would say if you were to go into forestry, pick a good school that will give you a good overview of all different aspects of forestry. Uh, also start from a low end position, like in the field, doing timber cruising and basic work before you move up to a provincial or regional position. So you always can, uh, can carry forward the knowledge you learn from the basics to the more advanced. So as a GIS forester, I manage all the GIS data that our company uses for forest management planning to uh, our actual day-to-day -day operations. So it could be annual planning, uh, annual reports, so reporting to government, uh, all the activities we've done in the year, mm -hmm. to uh, actually the on-the-ground forestry where we're actually managing the data for our areas of concern or our harvest blocks and uh, getting that data from 
a digital format into um, a paper map that we can take out to the field and, uh, and can be utilized to protect values and uh, show our harvesting areas. I get a good mix of being in the office and managing data, which I thoroughly enjoy, uh, to also being out on the actual operations and uh, experiencing uh, what I do in my office to uh, seeing it actually on the ground. I thoroughly enjoy that and see how what I do impacts uh, our forest operations in the forest in general. Because I'm a professional forester, I have a different background than most GIS professionals. Um, I was educated at Lakehead, so I'm a, I went through the Honors Bachelor of Science in Forestry program, so I'm an actual registered professional forester in this province. And uh, most GIS specialists tend to be um, uh, tends to be a diploma uh, program, so most uh, GIS specialists don't have a forestry background, so it's a little bit of a different GIS forestry. Uh, any advice? Um, do some research and determine what part of natural resource management you want to get into. Uh, there's several different uh, different different types of natural resource management, from forest health to GIS to professional forestry. So take a take a look at what you're interested in and uh, and go from there. All, all the courses that are now offered seem to be a little bit more tailored. So if you're interested in forest harvesting, then that's where you should be going. As opposed to going into forest health. I wear many hats as a park superintendent. I um, deal with a lot of uh, planning initiatives, whether it's a park management plan or forest management planning or uh, species at risk management planning, biology. Uh, I could also be in charge of um, a lot of operating things, helping fix water treatment plants, uh, okay. staff training. Uh, this time of year, of course, with the parks just opening, the, the operating parks that I look after, which is five. Okay. Uh, I've got a lot of staff recruitment happening right now, a lot of training happening getting the parks up and running, getting all the deadfalls out from the winter time. I'm, I'm an instructor for the Problem Black Bear Management course. Oh, okay. Um, I've got my level two water operator's license. And, and it changes with the, with the different cycles as uh, you know forestry operations happen near some of my non-operating parks, then I may take some extra forest modules. With this job, I, I'm able to leave my fingerprints. And you know, there's not many people I don't think can say in their career that they leave their fingerprints behind as a legacy. Mm -hmm. Working with the natural Ministry of Natural Resources as a park superintendent, it really gives me some hands-on opportunity to do something in the world from an environmental perspective. I'm originally from Southern Ontario, from mm -hmm. Peterborough area. I grew up in the uh, rural areas outside of Peterborough. And I went to Sussanford Fleming College. Uh, I got a graduation, graduated with a Fish and Wildlife Technical Diploma and a Law Enforcement uh, Technologist Diploma. I guess the best advice for, for young people coming up this day is to uh, grin and bear every job they can do. Um, no matter how dirty the job is, do the best you can and you will move forward. I'm Lonnie Lundmark. I work for Raleigh Falls Timber as a supervisor. Uh, I supervise chipping operation, uh, the whole bush operation, uh, bunchers, roads, and my forte is definitely chipping. I got here by going to Lakehead University, uh, taking the forestry diploma program, and uh, come to start working the Dryden forest lands uh, with Avnor at the time, uh, which now is no longer so working for Louis Ritchie and Raleigh Falls Timber. Favorite part of my job, definitely working outside and working with people. Uh, being outside every day is, is great. Uh, take the forestry program in, in LU or Sir Sanford, uh, and just there's lots of job opportunity. And like I said, the best thing is being able to work on fresh air uh, day in and day out. Uh, I think the forestry, pro the forestry in Dryden, I think, is here to stay and will be going for a long time. They're not investing money in that mill for no reason, so I, I believe our careers will be going for a long time yet. My name is Chantal Horning, and I'm from Collingwood, Ontario. And I'm a fourth year crew member, and I got into it uh, probably through my environmental studies in university. And my favorite part about the job is staying in the bush for 14 days and being outside a lot. And the adrenaline. My name is Mike Dwyer, I'm a fire management tech. Uh, I've been doing this for about 30 years, it is a career. My favorite part of the job is a variety. Variety? Right. Being in the bush, and uh, this is a good job to be in the bush. So if someone wanted to get into a career like that, what would you recommend that they do? Yeah. Forestry. Uh, probably take forestry, it will help. Forestry technician, that's what I was. Forestry degree as well. Anything, anything to do with the, the outdoors, outdoor rec, environmental studies, anything like that. And doing any kind of internship to the MNR would probably be a good start to spot if you're... Or, to start if you're a student. Cool.